Welcome back to another video. This is the third video that I've made now for my Trek Powerfly 4. I bought this bike uh, in the middle of COVID when I needed to get more exercise and get out of the house. And I did a couple of videos on it. Really love the bike. And I've done a one, uh, I think it was my second video, I did a major upgrade to the front fork that saved at least three pounds to the overall weight. I've been riding on that, love it. I highly recommend it. And if you remember from my previous video, outside of just the general awesomeness of the bike the one complaint i had was that the brakes were just adequate and the more i rode the more apparent it was that i needed better brakes because if you're going to be going downhill or, or braking hard it's going to take three fingers and you're basically holding on with just your pinky and your thumb while you're braking and i started to get fatigued uh, because i was afraid of falling or letting go of the of the bar while i was braking and I'm looking for brakes that I can at least break with two fingers, if not one finger. So in this video, I'll show you what I got and uh, hopefully we can get it installed properly. Follow on and we'll see how it goes. All right, I decided to go with the Shimano Dior XT, which is way better than what came with the bike, which is the Tektron. And as you can see with the Tektron or Tektro, I guess, it, does, it is hydraulic mineral oil, but uh, single caliper or single piston caliper. So I went with the Shimano XT. You know, the higher level is the XTRs, which basically just weren't worth the money. I'll show you how to read this chart. So you want the, it's the BL8100. There's an R and an L, so that's right and left. There is a couple new things. So there's this servo wave action. That is something with the new model. Uh, the 8120 is the specific model of this. I also picked up this kit for uh, bleeding the brakes. Okay, so let's open one up. Uh, let's see, the instructions are all online now, so they really don't give you much. But it is pre-installed with one end that you need to either cut, probably cut, just because um, it's gonna be too long. Okay, get yourself a couple of Allen tools because you're going to need those. Also, I bought this. I showed this in my last bike video. I highly, highly recommend this. It's a bike torque wrench for your bike. When you're dealing with like very, very low torques, like three to five to seven Newton meters, uh, you really, really need something like this. Um, I have stripped things, especially like things like this, uh, thinking I needed to like torque these down super tight and I just ended up ruining them uh, in my previous bikes and uh, I didn't want to do that again with the, the nice high-end Trek so I bought this tool so I torque everything properly. Okay so first thing we need to do, what's nice is this just pops out. That is amazing. Okay. Okay, you could mark these if you really wanted to. I'm gonna just adjust it where I want it when the time comes. Okay, so I've been experimenting a little bit to try to get this to, basically, you want this to fit on as far on there and you want this to be parallel or sort of rounded, I guess you could say, with the the disc. The bolts that come with it are way too short. I mean, that doesn't even go through. So the bolts I had on, on the bracket were these, but I've had to flip this over the other way. So on the other brakes, I had it flipped around. And now with this bolt here, it's too long. It, it actually bottoms out, so I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do, I, I put like a little nut here just to to provide some space and then I've got a washer here. So the nut sits inside of this washer and that should back out the bolt just enough to where it doesn't bottom out. I've got two washers here as just a spacer to back the caliper out enough to hopefully not hit. So I'm not gonna do anything on the top right now. I'm waiting to see if I get the bottom good enough. So I'm going to lift the front. Oh wow. It's actually... Okay, what 
it's rubbing. I think it's this. All right, let's try it. Perfect. No rubbing. Yes. Okay. I've decided to do it right there so you can see there's a, a slight bend and that would allow me to adjust this up because if, it, if it's adjusted up then it's going to tighten it if it adjusts back that way it's going to stretch it so that's a good give me a little bit of slack to uh to be able to adjust this up and down okay first thing i want to do i went ahead and took the took the control mechanism off just to give me some more room. I also moved this up so that this is just sort of like perpendicular to the ground because this is gonna be our bleed screw. Once we uh, open this up, we're gonna let air out. If I had this down in a normal position, then you know it's just gonna drip out. So um, I'm gonna cut this to like here, and then once I move it down, it's gonna basically create a little bit of a bend in here, uh, which is good enough. So yeah, don't lose this. This is what you're gonna hammer into the hose after you cut it. Make sure you put this boot on first. So before I forget, I'm just gonna take this off, which I don't need. This just shows you how far it's gonna go inside once you, you know, put it in. So it's about that much, uh, but make sure you put this boot on first. Just slide that on so you, once you get this in, you're just gonna push this on. So you don't wanna have to redo this. Okay, I got a creative use for wood. It's a uh, giant mouse trap. Well, this is more like a rat trap, but I uh, never used it. So I got a piece of wood I can just cut against. There we go. Get this up. Of course, we're introducing some air into there now. We need this cap to go inside of there. Let's see here. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna attempt to hold it and use my hammer here, Let's see if this works. See if this works better. Okay, let's see. What else can we try? Let's see if this works. I got this clamp here. I'm gonna use a rubber mallet. Oh yeah. Two hits and done. That worked really well. So yay for the quick grip. Save my fingers from getting even more smashed. Okay, now this will go like this through here. This is our little ring thing. It's just slightly to get it in. I'm not going to torque this down too much, but right about like there. We'll see if it starts leaking. Okay, you can see there's a little bitty rubber O-ring that needs to stay on there. Make sure that's not inside of there. Okay, so now we're gonna open up the funnel and we got the little O-ring, so we're just going to turn this into there. There's a little stopper inside of there. We're gonna leave that there for now. Also, I'm gonna take this out. Ugh, that way that will actuate. And we're gonna get some oil. Okay, once you squeeze that enough, feel like you got all the bubbles out, plunger in, make sure it's in all the way. I'm going to undo this. Hopefully don't spill it everywhere. I 
Okay, it's definitely full. Nice thing about this cup is it's got its own little pour spout thing. So I can just pour that back in there. Let's try not to cross thread it. Okay, this, since I didn't detect any leaking, I can put this on now. See, that fits on there nicely, that rubber, rubber boot. All right, now that we finished on the front, let's get to work on the back. slide right out pretty carefully and there we are okay so that rubber piece. Okay, should loosen things enough. Okay, I've got some light this time just so we can see inside of here. So I pulled this up, I turned it a little bit just so I can see inside of there. And you can see there's definitely, this is being clipped in. Um, and then there is a bracket that was holding, that this screwed into, which is right there. And that looks like masking tape holding nuts, which I can't believe getting that back on could be a real pain in the neck. Um, looking inside there, I mean, it's just straight down to uh, the motor. So all this is is just a, a mount for the battery. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. Definitely committed now. Okay, here we go. There. Should prevent more oil from leaking out. Okay, the next step is to take Caliper off. The key part is where those pads sit. You can see where the pads, when it goes on, you want it to be on there as far as possible without rubbing. That way you get maximum padage. So you can see a little tiny rubber ring in there. It's very interesting. Okay, so for this last part, basically you want to just align where you see air, air on both sides or, or light on both sides evenly. And then you want to tighten. It's not torqued, but it's just tight enough to where I don't have to worry about it moving. Nice, no rubbing. 
So that is a nice, perfect fit with the bracket, which I'm very happy about. Okay, get yourself some new zip ties and let's start to tie this down. Oh no, <laughs> look what I did. How in the world did that happen? Okay, let's go down. Oh, there we go. So we've got cables going up through here, coming out there, which I'll have to tie all this back up. I've decided to put these top bolts in first which should make it easier to put the bottom bolts in. Okay, I did end up laying the bike on a side, which did make it a little bit easier to get to, but it was still pretty hard. I ended up using this clamp here and just clamping this, which pushed it up into there, and that allowed me to line the holes up. Goodness, that was ridiculous. See that you only got like a half an inch of wiggle room here. Okay, it's a new day. And we ended with this plate getting installed, which is pretty easy. Got my dog out here and a heater is going because it is very cold outside. Uh, so I'm trying to get all this done before it starts warming up and I can go back outside and start riding. Yeah, these wires are nice and tight now. Definitely went back in easier than it came out. Okay. Since it's just plastic, I'm not tightening this much at all. All right, good. So we got our final cable length, which isn't that far, but you know, I think it's good enough actually. Look at this. So it slides on. Again, make sure you've got your rubber seal on there. Okay, I'll show you with the bubbles. There's actually quite a bit of bubbles coming out. Okay, I'm just gonna take some alcohol and just wipe up 
anything that might have gotten oil on it. Okay, torquing down the brake caliper bolts and I set this to eight Newton meters. Hey, so I just got finished with a four mile trail. I did this trail yesterday and then I did it again today. And just an experiment, I mentioned with these brakes, my goal was to be able to ride with two finger, if not one finger. Yesterday I rode with two fingers, just having the the intensity of the braking being so much easier. I didn't have any hand fatigue at all. And yesterday I did four miles in about 35 minutes. And then uh, today I did the very same trail and I challenged myself to try to use one finger. I didn't quite do it the entire time, but most of the time I was able to start braking with, with one finger on front and back and the speed was able to go a lot faster, shaved 10 minutes off. So today I did the uh, same four miles in uh, 25 minutes. So very happy with that. Shimano Dior XT, definitely uh, really, really good, especially for, for a heavy bike like this. The next upgrade I'm gonna do on this bike is gonna be the wheels and tires because these XR3 comps, they're not tubeless ready uh, because these wheels are not tubeless ready. So unfortunately you gotta replace both the wheel and the tire so once I wear these down, I'm just going to keep an eye on these center, these center knobs. Once they start wearing down, I'm definitely going to be replacing them. That will probably be the last upgrade I do because overall this bike is, it was amazing out of the box. Did the forks, the brakes, it's pretty much set. That's all for this video. Hope you all enjoyed it until next time.